Number 10. Chateau de Montsegur, a petite fortress in southern France, sitting atop a 170 meter drive uphill. Its ruins a safe house for once the Cathars. Its nickname, Satan's Synagogue. Described as one of the first Cathar castles and has been listed as a monument historique by the French Ministry of Culture. Cathar from the Greek meaning pure, these people were devout. The stronghold fell after a bloody 10 month siege in 1244 by King Louis IX. The field below is known to have been where over 200 men and women were burned alive for having refused to renounce their faith. On that day, the apparent bonfire that happened sparked a curse from the Cathars. Legends of these ruins say any person who strays off the marked footpaths and loses their footing will drop off every side of the so-called, quote, citadel in the sky. Sounds more like a metaphor to me than a curse, but uh, yeah. Number 9. Guri Amir Guri Amir is a mausoleum of the Turco-Mongol conqueror Timur in Uzbekistan, an important place in history of Central Asia. The mausoleum has been heavily restored since, but other than tourists and selfies, the people who intend to learn more of its rich history tend to respect its space. Local residents tried to stop the excavations, but the expedition continued. The tomb was opened by Soviet archaeologists in 1941 and was aimed to examine the human remains and family that belonged to Timur himself. On June 20th, the tomb was opened and the air filled with sharp choking odors of resins, camphor, and frankincense. At first they thought the smell was the sign of a curse. Then they read Timur's tomb. Yeah, a curse. Two inscribed warnings that read, when I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Whosoever disturbs my tomb will unleash an invader more terrible than I. Yeah, sounds right. Number eight. Kalao Papa. In 1866, during the reign of Kamehameha V, Hawaiian legislature passed a law designing this island the official site for patients affected by leprosy, aka Hansen's disease. About 1,200 families were exiled to quarantine here. At the time, the disease wasn't really understood, believing it to be highly contagious and very incurable. Whisked off and locked away amid paradise in total isolation. No amenities, buildings, or even potable water sources. Known by historians who visit as, quote, the pit of hell itself. And apparently the most cursed place on earth. With its grim history of loneliness, despair, and death, it's not surprising at all that Kalao Papa is also said to be haunted, haunted. Yeah, I mean, like, this island was basically a death sentence for those on it. Shackles, cages, caves. Sounds about right to be haunted by the afterlife, doesn't it? Number seven, Beit Sheerim. The House of Gates, or Beit Sheerim, Israel, is popular for its necropolis, known as Beit Sheerim National Park. It's partially an excavated archaeological site, consisting of a necropolis of rock-cut tombs. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2015, this thing is old, old. Only a portion has been excavated. A stone book, catacombs, mausoleums, and sarcophagi have all been found riddled in elaborate chiseled and painted symbols and inscriptions in Hebrew and in Greek. It's the most ancient extensive Jewish cemetery in the world. And of course, haunted and cursed. I mean, why wouldn't it be, right? A hex designed to deter grave robbers is scrawled into the limestone slabs in uneven Greek writing, blood red in paint. It reads, quote, Jacob the proselyte vows to curse anybody who would open this grave. So nobody open it. Number six, Anjakuni Village. Way up north, a village named after a bountiful, massive freshwater lake in Canada, Nunavut, 1932. A Canadian fur trapper went to the village of Anjakuni Lake. Known for their markets of elaborate fish and extensive winemaking, this village was a staple for most on the map. He arrived and sensed something a little odd too quiet and too foggy. He found it to be completely empty and deserted, even though there were signs of life still present. Campfires blazing, pots still boiling, doors were even open and food out waiting to be served, but no people. Thousands of Anjakuni villagers had simply vanished. To this date, there's no proper explanation for this mass disappearance of the people, and the weirdest part, all of the graves in the village cemetery were emptied as well. Even the skeletons from the ground were dug up. Nothing left but a pack of frozen sled dogs. RCMP thinks it was blue lights in the sky. I'm just saying, I didn't say it, they said it, not me. Number five, the city of screams. Ah yes, 
Shara y Golgola, the city of screams, top of my trip list. Peaceful once as it was the capital of the Goran people, until Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire seized it in about the 12th century. Apparently legend goes its ruler, Jalaladin, fought back and killed Khan's son. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. At first the city held strong but was sold out by the ruler's daughter, who, according to legend, betrayed the castle's secret entrance sharing and consorting with the enemy. Expecting to be rewarded, of course, her and her people were slaughtered, and the runes cursed. Russians, Taliban, and Americans have all used these runes as fighting posts over the years, as this place hasn't even been lived in since. Haunted by its legend of those who still hear the screams of the slain, sighting dark horseback figures and even uniformed specters are seen atop the rubble. Yeah, I'd say we just like leave this place alone completely, just kind of like back away slowly in respect, you know? Number four. Skeleton Lake. Deep within the Himalayas of India lay the bay of an ancient lake shrouded in an ancient mystery. Rupkund Lake, aka Skeleton Lake, was rediscovered by British forest rangers in around 1942. What they found was jarring. Hundreds of ancient human skeletons found at the edge of the lake. Investigations led some to think that it was a catastrophe of some sort. Nope, just three different groups of people died here at different times. But why? Wooden artifacts, iron spearheads, even slippers and jewelry were found by the National Geographic team who studied 30 skeletons in 2003. Skin still on some of them. 300 people have been found so far. Legend goes, Parvati, a supreme goddess, cursed the kingdom, unleashing drought and disaster upon them. She sent down a blizzard of hail and whirlwind which swept the people into the lake. I'm saying my prayers tonight, yo. I don't want to get like Jack Skellington out of nowhere. That sounds horrifying. Number three, Karun treasure. If we've learned anything about the famous Howard Carter curse with the excavation in Egypt, we see where this is already going, don't we? The people in Yusek, Turkey believe that the treasure found here is cursed. Karun treasure is the name given to the collection of 363 valuable Lydian artifacts from the 7th century BC. Also called the Croesus treasure. The treasure included gold and silver, rare Lydian coins, silver vessels, jewelry, even carved marble sphinxes. The discovery in 1966 made those afraid of it may bring upon an ancient curse. Nah, little dynamite and voila, open sesame. Seven men and related violent deaths or great misfortunes. We've learned nothing, haven't we? The treasure was inside the burial chamber of an unknown princess. Yeah, that sounds about right. What do you think? Should we be just mucking around with ancient sites and buried treasure? I'm saying leave it alone, dude. Like, there's a lot of this stuff out there, you know? Number two. Mainz. Mainz was founded by the Romans in the 1st century BC as a military fortress. Mainz became an important city in the 8th century AD as part of the Holy Roman Empire and later famous as the birthplace of Johannes Gutenberg, the inventor of the modern printing press. Mainz and its connected Jewish cemetery are both UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Because what they found there is pretty eerie. Tons of cursed tablets. The Roman temple of Magna Mater and Isis in Mainz has people puzzled. Thousands of cursed tablets, strips of lead inscribed with requests for divine intervention, then thrown into fiery pits at said temple. In the sanctuary, the mother goddess, Magna Mater, was worshipped according to the inscriptions. The cult of Isis originates from Egypt, while the Mater Magna is a Greek adoption of the goddess. Both cults, a long tradition in the Roman Empire. The Isis cult, established under Caligula with military brick stamps found on site, means this place was built on behalf of the emperor for lots of cult practice. And number one, Mount Ebal. Mount Ebal is one of the two mountains in the West Bank territories of Palestine, next to Mount Gerizim. In advance of the Israelites' entry to the Promised Land, Deuteronomy 11.29 records Moses saying, quote, when the Lord, your God, has brought you into the land which you go to possess, you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. In Deuteronomy 27, an instruction is given to build an altar on Mount Ebal. When done, split into two groups, one on Mount Ebal to pronounce curses, and one on Mount Gerizim to pronounce blessings. Well, discovered in 2019, a teeny tiny tablet was found dating to the Bronze Age. Scott Stripling, Pieter van der Veen, and Professor Galil claim to have found the earliest written examples of God's name as Yahweh. It says, quote, Cursed, 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 cursed by the God Yahweh. You will die cursed. Cursed, you will surely die. Cursed, 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 cursed. All right, we get it. Number 10, 
Lizzie Borden's house. A bed and breakfast located at 232nd Street is home to one of America's most haunted and mysterious houses ever. Now, the Lizzie Borden house gets its momentum from the unsolved murder, of course, of Lizzie Borden back in 1892. She's one of the most infamous true crime figures known for killing her father and stepmother horribly. She did it with, uh, with a hatchet. Just in case you're thinking, how did she do it? A hatchet. There's a twisted rhyme about the incident, but I'm not gonna sing that here. I'm not getting cursed on YouTube, but thanks. If, if you know it, hum it. It's pretty catchy. 1892, Lizzie's stepmother of 27 years, she was hit 19 times while her father, Andrew, was hit 11 times. Now, although Lizzie Borden was acquitted and found not guilty, the dark history draws in crowds, of course, every night for its nightly tour of the premises. Gotta make a buck off this horrible history, right? Netflix and, you know, real life. The Lizzie Borden Room, the infamous room where these horrors took place, is requested for the most paranormal overnighters. Yeah, some 1408 stuff. People staying overnight in haunted houses. Would you ever do this? Number nine. Leap Castle. Leap Castle, Ireland. Built around 1250, this beauty was one of the most lived in castles in Ireland. It was built originally by the O'Bannon family. Um, the classic happens, father dies, powerful family, no successor to the throne. This turned into a brother versus brother kind of deal. Things got shady, a lot of family attacks, nobody could get along, so now we got a castle full of ghosts. A popular sighting is two haunting ghost girls playing in the main hallway. Their apparition has been seen since the 1600s. But the most famous sighting is that of the Red Lady. The Red Lady wears a long red dress. She's tall and lean and she has one of her hands raised. That's terrifying. Can you imagine a ghost trying to block you at all times, just coming down the hallway? Number eight, the Ram Inn. An ancient old haunted inn. Nope, I could never. Also, this one doubles as a functioning pub located in England. Uh, okay, that one I could probably do. That one I could maybe do. The inn has been owned and operated by many of folks since as early as the 1100s. The ancient Ram Inn has been investigated by years of paranormal researchers. Shows like Ghost Adventures, Most Haunted, Ghost, you know, you name it, all of them. People with, you know, they've stood around there and pointed things. Haunted, for sure haunted. That's what they did. They, they stood there and went, Legend has it that the energy from Stonehenge actually feeds the property's paranormal power. Not to mention the backyard is home to a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. Stonehenge feeding power? I mean, that's one way to save on your electricity bill. You know, got any tips? Sans ghosts, got any tips? Number seven, Kalua Papa. Heading over to the beautiful Hawaii for this one. I know one of our viewers is from Hawaii. Always wanted to go. Thing is, islands in the middle of the ocean scare the out of me. And also, haunted villages. Yeah, we don't like both of those combined. This was once referred to as the most cursed place on earth. The coast of Molokai sounds like a great time and from Google Earth, it certainly looks like a fair weekend getaway. But for over 100 years, this was an isolation coast for patients with leprosy. That of course had to change at some point and the laws did in 1969. But as of right now, no more than five people live on this part of the island due to its cursed history. Fair, that's more than fair, I wouldn't do it. Would you do it, would you live on a cursed island? I mean, it's beautiful, you get a tan, sure, but you'd also get haunted. Number six, The Conjuring Farmhouse. We may have a clear photo with the real Bathsheba Sherman, AKA a real life witch from the Conjuring movie. Yeah, this photo is from the Perrin family farmhouse back when it was the old Arnold estate. Now, if you've seen the first Conjuring film, it's based on those events that happened in this estate in real life. This was 1885 and this witch lived next door to the farm. And although we'll never really know it, many believe she is the lady in the middle closest to the camera. Also, the fact that she's standing by herself, I feel like that's for sure a witch, you know? Like the vibe of the group was off, everyone kind of like shuffled away from the witch. This is the real house. It's referred to by the parent family as the old Arnold Estate. So two names gets kind of confusing, but it's the one place. It's located in Harrisville, Rhode Island. Aside from paranormal horrors, the parent family also had to deal with financial ones. When the family lived there, a pipe burst randomly and then just flooded their entire business. So they had to sell off more than 85% of their land. Do you guys think the real Bathsheba Sherman is in this photo? The lady on the left there also looks a little witchy. I don't know, but who am I to judge? It's greedy. Number five. Amityville House. You've more than likely seen this photo, either in the Amityville Horror movie, or maybe you've seen it go viral since. The Demonic Ghost Boy Photograph. Also great name, really gets to the point. This photo was taken inside the actual Amityville house back in 1976. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared and a photographer named Gene Campbell set the whole operation up. Gene was working with paranormal investigators at the time. He was working with Ed and Lorraine Warren. 
Yeah, the classic. Now we're getting it. Now we're, oh, this may be real. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken on the Merv Griffin show. Now, of course, it was a big deal, and many believe this is, in fact, one ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there before that horrible 1974 event. What do you guys think? Elaborate hoax, or perhaps this photo is one solid piece of evidence that maybe, probably, the Amityville Horror House is indeed haunted. Number four, the Queen Anne Brick Mansion. Heading over to Georgia for this haunted mansion. When I say mansion, also, I mean like haunting of Hill House type mansion, not like Will Smith mansion. Know what I mean? No one's playing tennis in the back of this one. In Savannah's Columbia Square, the Queen Anne Brick Mansion was built in 1892 for William and Anne Kehoe and their 10 kids. After a few deaths took place in the house, the building was converted into a bed and breakfast. And since 1992, guests have reported hearing footsteps, seeing ghosts, and also sounds of kids playing. I don't want that in a regular bed and breakfast, let alone a haunted one, you know? Just let me sleep. Why, are the, why, why am I hearing squeaks, like shoe squeaks outside? Maybe we're in Will Smith's mansion, maybe. Maybe they're playing tennis. Number three, Bangar Fort. Back in the 16th century, King Madho built the massive Bangar Fort in India. Now the population of this small town was around 1,000, give or take. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful fort. Many considered this a luxury, and rightfully so. It looks like a set piece from Game of Thrones. But legend has it, Princess Ratnavati, who at the time was living in the luxurious fort, she was the talk of the town. Dudes were proposing left, right, and center, trying everything to get her attention. Princes of all over the world would come in and try and take her hand. Now one day when visiting town, a magician named Skindia saw the princess shopping for perfumes. So he planned on using the black magic of Vasha Karan on the princess. Yeah, he mixed it with the perfume that she was admiring, but it didn't work. The princess smashed the perfume, and as the bottle broke apart, the magician cursed the entire fort and those living inside of it. Only days later, a war erupted around the fort, and there were, of course, tons of casualties. So let's avoid this area forever, shall we? I mean, a magician curse? There's a war two days later, it's a fort. Those are hot words, I'm not going in that area. Number two, the Humble Inn. Ah, sounds very humble, sounds calm. The Busby Stoop chair comes from 1702, and its curse arrived promptly after Englishman Thomas Bubsy had some issues with his father-in-law at the Humble Inn. Yeah, he also didn't handle these issues too well, so now he has to be hanged for it. Can't just kill people, Thomas, all right? Relax. He was hanged right near the Humble Inn, but a chair that was nearby is now said to hold that spirit of one Thomas Busby. If you sit on this chair, you are set to die in a frightful accident. A frightful accident. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds, well, sounds frightful, sounds horrible. Locals say during World War II, airmen from a nearby base came to the pub, and those who sat on this chair never returned. In the 70s, more accidents were also connected, but they still kept the chair around at the Humble Inn for some reason until 1978. At that point, the chair was donated to the Thirst Museum, where it now sits haunted. So that's great. Imagine it's like dealing with a haunted chair. That's a lot of responsibility. Not even a rocking chair either, just a chair. And finally, number one, the dark mirror. The Dark Mirror, is that the Thor sequel nobody liked, or is that something else? The Dark Mirror is part of a fun little collection, the world's only mobile museum of the unexplained. So yeah, could approach in your neighborhood anytime. I don't know, keep an eye out for floating mobile museums. This mirror that travels with it supposedly doesn't shine bright like a diamond. Instead, this dark mirror has a life of its own. The museum obtained it originally from the owner who purchased it at a psychic fair in the Columbus area. That's a you know pretty solid place to get something like that. that it checks out. The same owner said the mirror reflected horrifying visions when they gazed into it. And according to the museum, visitors also claim to have reported uncomfortable sightings such as their own corpse when gazing into the reflective glass. Yeah, I'm looking in and I'm like, ah, no spoilers. I'm only on season 28 of life, so I'm gonna gaze away. Number 10, St. George's Church. Kicking off our spooky list, we're gonna head to the Czech Republic. St. George's Church was originally built way back in 1352. That's, that's a long time ago. And it's seen many dark days, of course. The building itself was destroyed many times by fires century after century, yet it somehow survived all of them. One of the worst timed events ever happened in 1968. And this, uh, this is what makes people think it's haunted. More than fair. The roof partially collapsed during a funeral service, and after that point, everyone was convinced that the church was haunted, and they refused to enter and do any more services inside. More than fair, that's the worst timing ever. I'm thinking of, um, I think you should leave, season two, coffin drop. I'm thinking of that sketch right now. That's gonna be in my head all day. The location is still a hot spot. Since 2012, many visitors entered the cursed church. Would you go in? Would you do it? I would, probably. I'd poke my hand in a little, see what happens. 
I'm terrified of ghosts. I wouldn't go near that. Number nine, Edinburgh Castle. Scotland's capital city. I've been to Scotland a handful of times. It's one of my favorite places to visit. All those pubs, ooh, what a good time. Wish I could remember. It's got a castle, I've heard. You've got a castle over there. Apparently, Edinburgh Castle, I of course have to visit every time I go. It's a calf workout that I look forward to, personally. Now, some of these parts in the castle are chilling because it's, you know, it's freezing cold in Scotland, but sometimes you can feel the haunt in the air. These rooms date back to more than 900 years ago, so these walls have seen a few fortnights. Sightings are pretty popular. Sightings of a colonial prisoner from the American Revolutionary War, that's pretty common, so that's uh, terrifying to hear. And as well as French prisoners from the Seven Years' War. You're just gonna see ghosts of prisoners that might pop up or photobomb you. That's really, I'm terrified talking about this. If you're thinking about visiting, perhaps the ghost of the wandering dog in the castle cemetery will convince you to buy a ticket. I love Scotland, it's beautiful. The air just smells nice. Got a big old hill too. Number eight, Almadam. Almadam is about 40 miles southeast of Dubai. This ghost village was built back in the 1970s and it was deserted shortly after. It's beautiful, but legend has it the land is full of shape-shifting spirits, you may have heard of them, called jinns. Now these spirits are responsible for scaring folks away from the town. Yeah, that ought to do it. Now it's tough to tell whether the spirits have since departed. I mean, that would be ideal, but Almadam still looks haunted and it still is abandoned. So yeah, my, my vote is probably still haunted. Dunes that partially swallow rows of houses and a mosque, it all just sits there, stuck in history. Now these spirits are still living in the 70s, so who knows, this is their home, not ours, so let's just leave this one alone. It looks like something out of Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, you know what I mean, all the sand, just barren, it's haunting, so jarring to look at. Or that one level from Mario Odyssey that's just, you know, sand and nothing else. Number seven, Gunnivor, Iceland. This one has heavy history behind it, holy smokes. Now sometimes places are haunted by multiple ghosts, past prisoners, while others have, you know, just one up story. Iceland's Gunnivor Mud Pool, perhaps you visited, it sounds kind of, you know, nice when I say it out loud. It's one of the largest and haunted, apparently. The pool was named after Gunna, a woman who lived in this area of the peninsula 400 years ago. Sadly, Gunna passed away of starvation, but her spirit apparently came back home and killed the current landlord and his wife. It was terrifying. That's a big yikes. The town called in a priest to take care of that issue, but of course, some visitors today claim to see that same ghost of one Gunna around the very same boiling hot mud pool. <laughs> one gun, it sounds like a rapper. I don't know why I said that. Ghost or no ghost, I'm not going anywhere. This sounds like an expensive hazard to be near. Anything boiling, boiling or muddy? I'm like, no, it's, that's a hazard, I'm, that's hot. Number six, RMS Queen Mary. Heading over to the beautiful Long Beach, California. Here we go, I'll tell you right now, I would never spend a night in this hotel. Nope, I would rather sleep in Stephen King's 1408 hotel room than this RMS Queen Mary situation. Mm -mm. During World War II, the ship was in operation briefly, and then it served as a luxury ocean liner from 1936 to 1967. Now, during this time, a killing happened, a sailor was also crushed by a door, very tragic, and a couple people had drowned in the pool. So it's a lot of, a lot of bad stuff going on here. It's like the back of a DVD of Ghost Ship. You're like, what am I reading? This is terrifying. Cut to 1967, Long Beach purchased that ship and turned it into a hotel, a floatel, dare I say, where now it still sits today. Would you visit here? Would you spend the night in this haunted Titanic? Let alone, I, I wouldn't even step a foot on the boat, no way. Boats scare me in general, let alone ghosts on a boat. Number five, haunted ballroom. This one I would for sure check out. I would definitely moonwalk in a haunted ballroom. Are you kidding me? This is like the first eight minutes of that thriller music video. This house, if you want to call it that, this mansion slash castle, was built between 1871 and 1887 for a New Zealand politician, William Larnick. And like every other Disney castle, you need to have a 3,000 square foot ballroom. Yeah, no friends required, just here's the big ballroom, good luck. Larnick gave his 21 year old daughter a ballroom for her birthday. Yeah, here you go, Kate. Now go make thousands of friends. Good luck. Would you want a ballroom, like, as a gift? That feels like the worst gift ever. What happened to ponies, Dad? Jeez. Kate sadly passed away at age 26 due to typhoid cancer, but death does not get in the way for Kate. No, the spirit of the youngin' is still said to haunt the ballroom and still dance around, so. Beautiful on one hand, so terrifying on the other. A haunted ballroom ghost? That's the scariest movie I can imagine. Number four, the Snedeker House. This is a classic Ed and Lorraine Warren ghost story. They have a few out there, probably too many, but we'll see. 
It was the main inspiration, believe it or not, to The Haunting in Connecticut. We've seen that movie. It's a classic. It's a good banger right there. Ed and Lorraine got a call from the owners in real life of the home saying that their son was experiencing personality changes. Now at first, maybe you'd laugh at that call. Maybe he's just growing up. Maybe he's a bit moody, whatever. Now this was not the case at all. He wasn't just a moody teen growing up, you know, shut up dad. That was not, that, that wasn't that here. These changes were violent in nature, and on top of that, a pretty obvious other issue, they were seeing apparitions in their home. Sun's acting odd, and we also have ghosts, so Ed and Lorraine were of course interested, why not? Old house in Southington, Connecticut. Alan and Carmen Snedeker then found these tools, old tools used by morticians in their house. Yeah, their home was once a funeral parlor. Fun fact to find out after you've moved in, I guess. That's the worst thing to find out. One day when Carmen was mopping the floor, it apparently turned blood red and began to smell foul. So Ed and Lorraine came to one conclusion, and that was demons. The house was full of them. Yeah, that ought to do it. You start mopping, all of a sudden there's blood everywhere. You're like, well, that's, that's it. It's your home now. Enjoy. Let it dry, and then, uh, yeah, pine saws in the cupboard. Brick legs. Number three. 455A Sackett Street. Not to be confused with 221B Baker Street, that's where Sherlock Holmes lives. 455A Sackett Street is a haunted apartment in Brooklyn. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not very majestic, not a lot of eyeglasses. Imagine moving to the big city, a big city that's known for being loud, and on top of that, now you have ghosts. Good luck getting a wink of sleep. One lady who grew up in the apartment experienced these hauntings herself. Apparently fires would start randomly, loud bangs would happen in other rooms, all around just bad energy, which given what I just said, seems more than fair. Sightings of apparitions were common, but it was always the same female looking spirit. Number two, cursed stadium. Can a sports team be cursed? I mean, I live in Toronto, home of the Maple Leafs, so. <laughs> Our last one was like 1743, I believe. I don't know. But the Chicago Cubs curse, maybe you've heard of this. That was a huge deal for a very long time. The Chicago Cubs curse comes from 1945, when a man named Bill Sianis, nicknamed Billy Goat, great nickname, he was kicked out of a Chicago Cubs game. He actually didn't even get into the game four to begin with. Was he too intoxicated, or did he bring a live goat with him to the game? Yep, the latter. That's why he got kicked out. Bill brought with him his pet goat for good luck. So, you know, after the staff said, of course, no, you can't enter the 1945 World Series with a live goat, get out. He then cursed the club over and over on his way out, saying the Cubs ain't gonna win no more. And that was the game that they dropped the ball, pun intended. The Detroit Tigers won and the curse of the Billy Goat then kicked off for real. It got so out of hand that come 1994, that long later, the Cubs had lost 12 games in a row, their worst home start in history. So Sam Sionis went to Wrigley Field, everybody was chanting to, you know, finally let the goat in, and then the Cubs won 5-2. So, I don't know. It's kind of proven that there was a little bit of a curse here. Number one, the Borley Rectory. This house was originally built back in 1862. It was a house built for the rector of Borley, but after a fire in 1939, it was of course never the same. It was finally demolished after 1944, but before its final days, the Daily Mirror printed a lot of history about this house, just working for Buzzfeed back in the 40s. Harry Price, a paranormal researcher at the time, reported sightings of a ghost nun or a ghost car that would often drive by. Both probably so distracting to your day-to-day -day duties. As well as footsteps and unexplained sounds on the property, it was all deemed haunted. A little piece of the haunted home still sits in the Warren Occult Museum today. It's a brick, a nice haunted brick from the Borley Rectory. The, the rectory, the Borley, just a haunted brick. Hey, come on, hey, come on up to, hey, line on up around the block to see this haunted brick. Yeah, not bad, right? Check out that ghost brick. Number 10. The Dark Hedges. If you've been re-watching Game of Thrones recently, like I have, this first one here should ring a bell. The Dark Hedges, first of all, we love the name, real grim, makes me ask a few questions right off the hop. It's located near the town of Ballymoney in Northern Ireland. Now the beech trees line up alongside the narrow half kilometer road. A common sighting has taken place at the Dark Hedges. The sighting of one gray lady. Yeah, nice phantom woman. We love those when they appear while you're driving 10 and two. The Stewart family planted these seeds back in 1775. So perhaps this ghost is somebody who was buried there at the same time. That's my personal guess. Because I can't imagine this land and how much nicer it probably looked back in the 1700s. I can't imagine it not being used for ceremonial purposes. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense when you look at the dark hedges that it's completely haunted. 
I totally believe this road is one of the most top 10 haunted in the world. It's so Tim Burton. Salem Road. Okay, this video shows a couple guys driving in a truck down a road in what looks like a very rural area. There's no actual location confirmed in this video, so sleep in fear. Could be right around the corner of where you live. They're just dudes being dudes, hanging out, driving late at night until they come across a woman, classic, dressed in the classic white apparel. Yeah, walking down the middle of the road, check it out. They're obviously really confused by what she's doing is walking down the middle of the road, and she seems to be unbothered by the fact that there's, you know, a truck driving up behind her. They stop the truck and one of them gets out to go and check on her, and then this happens. The guys continue to freak out, telling them to get out of there, then the other guys don't believe them until they realize out of nowhere that this lady is now all of a sudden in front of their truck. It's honestly like a little mini horror film, this one here. I'm not sure who these guys are or what this lady is or what happened, but that's why I threw it in, because. I had to see that shit last night and I'm like, well, now so do you. Number eight, the screaming tunnel. This next one here is in Ontario, Canada, which may or may not be where we are right now. So scared. Maybe I'll check it out on my lunch break. Who knows? The Screaming Tunnel. First of all, that name is great. We love those names. That's how you do it. Get right to the punch. There's a few stories behind this one, like most of these, but one version is haunting, and this story sticks with me. If you came out of a tunnel and saw a farmhouse, you wouldn't think anything of it. But the story behind this specific farmhouse is haunting, and as well as the tunnel that leads to it. Near the south entrance, the farmhouse back in the day caught fire, and a woman apparently ran out of the house. She was totally freaked out obviously by what's happening. And to this day, we can still hear her screaming echo throughout the tunnel. Number seven, St. Patrick's Purgatory. This one comes all the way from the 15th century. It's been referred to as the entrance to hell. So yeah, buckle up, there you go. St. Patrick's Purgatory is located on Ireland's Station Island. And the tale goes as such, St. Patrick was getting frustrated with his followers. Again, this is way back in the day. They were doubting him until, you know, Jesus himself appeared before him and then guided him to a cave on Station Island. Inside of this cave, there was a pit which was said to be the gateway to purgatory. And they called it Satan's Pit. Again, right to the point, we love that. Now this is apparently where souls go to endure punishments for their sins before being able to enter heaven. All right, gotta go do a little dirty work, a little bit of community service before you go up and have some Cosmic cocktails. I don't know. I don't know. From the 12th century on, the island has attracted those who want to get a closer glimpse of, you know, purgatory. But also in 1632, it was officially closed off to the public and most of the records of pilgrimages that had taken place prior were destroyed. So history was hidden on purpose. Okay, fine, keep your secrets, but we'll find them. I'll sniff them out. To this day, believers will still travel to the island and participate in a three-day contemplation of the nature of hell. That's cool. Hey, what are you doing next weekend? Uh, I'm actually busy, I'm going to the island. The Toronto island? No, you gotta think about hell for a bit. Number six. Moonville Tunnel. About 30 minutes away from the castle in the woods of Vinton County, Ohio, we have this haunted road from the late 1800s. Now, the legend has it, if you walk through this tunnel, you'll hear the cries from a railroad brakeman who lost his life after being struck by, you guessed it, a train. Pretty sad, pretty grim history. Apparently this tunnel has taken more than just one life as well. It was sadly quite common for pedestrians to attempt to walk through it, thinking that it was a shortcut, only to meet an oncoming train halfway through, and of course they have no way to get out at that point. Another account says that if you turn your car off inside this tunnel and sit there, you'll hear the cries of those lost in the tunnel. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. Also, keep your car away from the train tracks. Have we seen any movie ever? Don't do that. Even the train track in Mario 64 where you're trying to take that shortcut, I wouldn't even go down that tunnel. That's too scary. Number five, Tapir Mountain, Belize. Home with the Crystal Maiden Sacrifice. Awesome, sounds comforting already. The Mayans believed that the entrance to their underworld, Zibalba, was located in these cave networks. The name of the cave, Aktan Tunichil Mukno, discovered in 1989, translates to Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre, and the nature reserve has already had its fair share of dark stories surrounding it. There were once rivers of blood and scorpions flowing through it, which is literally the worst combo I can think of, personally. The site has been described as a subterranean labyrinth overseen by the Mayan death gods, the lords of said Zilbalba. Obviously, explorers love this place. Even me talking about it, I'm like, can we go there? Is this on our budget? Let's do this. And let's be real, even me mentioning Mayan death gods to you, you're probably like, mm, how much is an Uber? I don't know, maybe we'll check out some flights to this Ziabalba. Number four, Mount Hecla. Mount Hecla is a stratovolcano located in South Iceland. So, 
Maybe not, let's not go to this one ever, actually. A stratovolcano. This is an extremely active volcano site, which of course has something to do with people believing that this is the front doors to hell. I mean, to be fair, it feels like it, right? Definitely physically feels like it, and it looks like it. There's an Anglo-Norman poem called The Voyage of St. Brennan, and in it, it mentions that this volcano is the prison of Judas, the apostle who famously betrayed Jesus. And to add to this apocalyptic image already that you're creating in your head, these firebirds flying around the volcano were once thought to be lost souls. Yeah, or birds that caught on fire because the air is so hot. One of the two, both pretty horrible. It was believed that the volcano was the hot hangout as well for witches who were trying to slide into the devil's DM. Yeah, a lot of cult meetings, what happened at this location. All these legends combined, yeah, it totally makes sense why people would think some sort of dark and evil power lurks inside of the volcano, especially considering it's one of the most active volcanoes in Iceland. In fact, in the world. Number three, Mayan underworld. Okay, moving back over to the ancient Maya. A lot of good stuff there. Back in 2003 in Mexico, archeologist Sergio Gomez arrived to work. The beautiful Mayan serpent pyramid, right? Imagine working here. I worked at a movie theater and I was like, nice, this place rocks. This guy works at a serpent pyramid. He's like, yeah? <laughs> See ya. And out of nowhere, a sinkhole just appeared overnight, right? This was alarming. It was super close to the actual pyramid. So Sergio covered it with a tent quickly, obviously not knowing where to begin with the stressful situation at one of the most historical sites on the planet. But what he found that day was hiding underneath him his entire career. He got a few coworkers to lower him into the fresh sinkhole. So right off the bat, this guy deserves a razor too. He was lowered into this tunnel and this tunnel was purposely blocked off 2000 years ago. The tunnel, connected the serpent pyramid to the temple of the moon and to the temple of the sun. So it's a hot shortcut, not gonna lie. Now it's one thing to discover secret tunnels and pyramid entrances your entire life, but to fall down another layer of secrets almost 30 years later, it's almost like life's making him not quit. He's like, yeah, 30 years, I think I'm done here. <sighs> what? Number two, the devil sinkhole. Yeah, we're on the topic of sinkholes, we made it. We're, we're going down a weird, weird rabbit hole here. I love it. The devil sinkhole, great name. Already looking forward to this one. Located in Rock Springs, Texas. Texas, we can find this massive 50 feet wide and 400 feet deep hole. Yeah, it's really big. I'm, I'm gonna say that this is legally a road or a tunnel because it goes places. Residents first discovered the sinkhole in 1876, and ever since then, arrowheads have been discovered, burnt rocks, signs of life spanning back hundreds and hundreds of years. So yeah, it's a deep, old tunnel that just created itself, which is so scary. Thanks, Earth. These discoveries have led people to believe that it may have once been used as some sort of burial ground, or perhaps even a place of sacrifice. People would crawl in here, sacrifice somebody, and then crawl back out. Wow, that's so scary. Some tunnels are full of ancient artwork as well, spanning back to the beginning of, I don't know, humanity. Others just have bones and bats in them, so it really depends which route you take. It's a nice little gamble. Bones, bats, Battlestar Galactica, or treasure, you're like, uh, <laughs> Residents will often gather in the evening, and if they're lucky, see around three million bats emerge from said sinkhole and hunt food, so. Yeah, I can say this is a road to hell, for sure. That many bats flying out? Or Bruce Wayne owns it, one of the two. And finally, number one, the Paris Catacombs. What feels like a never-ending maze, these tunnels under Paris stretch for hundreds of miles. And they're also absolutely terrifying. There have been movies on these catacombs. As above, so below is terrifying. See, originally these tunnels were built for Paris stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, its purpose started to shift. Cemeteries were starting to pile up because of you know, said plagues. Literally, they weren't as good as getting rid of bodies in clean ways, so the dead was just piling up bodies on top of another. So they were handling them like they would handle garbage, just out of sight, out of mind, right? So the solution here was to use these catacombs that were already existing, right? These tunnels have been there for centuries, so you might as well put them to good use. 